Hi, welcome to Author Spotlight. My name is Lucy and this is the program on AADL TV where I like to take a few minutes to highlight some of the works of one author. And the author that I am going to be shining a spotlight on today is Margaret Verbal. Margaret Verbal is an enrolled citizen of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and she has said that her fiction is an attempt to recapture the Cherokee Nation. Margaret Verbal is the author of four novels. The first one of those novels, Maud's Line, was published in 2015 and was shortlisted for the 2016 Pulitzer Prize. Maud's Line is a story that takes place in eastern Oklahoma. Uh, this is where Verbal was born and lived for the early part of her life. Maud Nail is the main character. She is a woman who has grown up on Cherokee allotments in this area of Oklahoma. This book takes place in 1928, which is significant for two reasons. The years that it's sandwiched between historically. In 1927, there was a really big flood that did damage across a lot of parts of the Midwest. And then in 1929, uh, we know that there will be a stock market crash. Maud lives with her father, Mustard, and her brother, Lovely. Her father looks out for himself. He's often off spending money and drinking. He doesn't really have a steady job. So Lovely and Maud have grown up to be very close. Maud does a large part of taking care of the allotment. Lovely helps her, but she is a very hard scrabble woman. Uh, she also feels trapped in the situation that she's in. She feels trapped by her lack of resources. She feels trapped by her lack of support. And she has this stifled feeling like she doesn't necessarily want to live the life that her mother lived. She's a really spirited character. And I found going through all of Margaret Verbal's books that there are these really strong women at the forefront of all four of them. So Maud's a very spirited character. She loves reading. She wants a life that is off of the allotments, but she does feel like she's just gonna stay there and repeat her mother's life, which was a life of hard work and a life of desperation. Her mother died of a snake bite. So there's also this sense that Maud has where she's pulled between the traditions of the Cherokee Nation and then this white society. And her life is sort of shaped by the values of both of those things clashing. And through the lens of Maud and through the other characters in this book, we see that that struggle, the struggle to maintain their culture and fight against assimilation sort of sustains them, but it also traps them where they are. Maud meets a peddler who comes to town. He is a white man and he and Maud begin to share a bond over their love of books and then they become really close and she starts to imagine a way out. There are still people in the allotments who are pulling her back in. So she's really at this struggle and that, that's the forefront of, of the novel. It's beautifully written. There's a lot of viscera. This is sort of a tough life with snakes and with rabid animals and with death. And Maud is really someone who is managing a lot of those things. Another part of Maud's character that I really enjoyed is Maud is very refreshingly open and honest about her own sexuality. She's aware of her place as a woman in this sexist society where gender roles are pretty strictly defined and she's expected to behave in a, a certain way and do certain things because she's a woman, but she doesn't allow that to keep her from enjoying her body. A lot of the character names, um, really some of the last names from Maud's line appear in Cherokee America. Cherokee America was written in 2019 and it is the story of, essentially a story of a woman named Cherokee America, or Czech as she's called, but it is also about the whole world that Czech exists in and all of the relatives that Czech has and what is going on in the Cherokee Nation at the time, which is before Maud's line. So this is taking place like in the 18, mid 1870s and beyond. Czech is the mother of five boys uh, from various ages of child to adult. She is really the matriarch of this community on Indian land, this Cherokee Nation community. And the book really tells a lot of the story of this family being here, which is very expansive. There are many characters in this book. There's a front piece which gives us sort of a cast of characters, but I did find that there were many other names outside of that that were mentioned. Having read Maud's line first, it was interesting to pick up on some of the names that I'd heard before, and you realize that some of these people, their children will appear later in Maud's life. This is the same area and the same community. It's just a much broader overview of 
the world and it's approached from the eyes of a different character. It doesn't just focus on Czech's point of view. It brings in a lot of other points of view. Margaret Burble's writing is really good. She's a very careful writer. She does so much research. There's just not any syntax or any language that doesn't flow. Her novels are highly impressive. The next book that she published is a uh, kind of a turn from this Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. It's called When Two Feathers Fell from the Sky, and this was published in 2021. And this is actually the first book that I ever read of Margaret Verbal's. I hadn't heard of her, and this book sort of landed in my lap, and I read it, and I loved it. And I didn't know why more people weren't talking about it or really why I wasn't familiar with Margaret Verbal's name. When Two Feathers Fell from the Sky takes place in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where Margaret Verbal herself did move after being born in Oklahoma. And the neighborhood that Margaret Verbal lived in was on the grounds of the actual Glendale Park Zoo that was no longer there. This book takes place in 1926 and it follows a woman named Two Feathers, which we find out is actually not her name. She is a Cherokee horse diver. So she is someone who gets up on a horse and dives off of like a high plank into the water. She does this at Glendale Park Zoo, but she grew up on the Miller Brothers 101 Ranch in Oklahoma, which was actually a real place as well. It was really where the last Wild West show in existence happened. And so that is the world that Two Feathers is coming from, this Wild West show. And so part of the show is this horse diving. She is very close to her horse. Obviously there's a huge amount of trust between the two of them. And there is an accident during her act. And so the world changes drastically for her. She stays at the zoo. She doesn't go home. And the zoo around her starts to become a stranger and stranger place. Weird things happen. Animals are dying. People are falling in love. Some of what we hear is from a ghost, someone who's watching out for two feathers. We also see that this area where this zoo has been built is built over a number of graves. There are caves, it's unstable ground, but there are these Cherokee graves that have gotten opened and robbed. That sort of lends to the importance of the ghosts in this book, that there are actually these places where people were buried and those places were plundered. This book is so interesting because of all the different things that are happening at the Glendale Park Zoo. There are turtles brought in for racing. There's a bison that Two Feathers calls Adam and she chats with him. There are some bears that are central to the story and there are just so many other interesting people at this zoo because it's sort of this place that has brought people from different walks of life and different places into this wild west world. These people who have different acts or jobs at the zoo, there's the park manager who's really interesting, he's an Englishman, there's the park owner and his wife, there is someone else who is posing as an Indian though he is not. There is also a piece of this book that talks about the black people who are living in that area as well and then that brings in some of the dangers of Jim Crow. There are so many different elements to this story but all of them are interesting and fascinating and they make sense together and they really help to give you a sense of what was going on at the Glendale Park Zoo at that time. There's also a lot of mystery in this book because we don't necessarily know and when we find out the characters might not know why certain things are happening to animals and people. And so again in Two Feathers you have this really strong independent funny female character like Maud and like Czech. There's a lot of humor in these books as well. The characters don't take themselves too seriously and that's reflected in some of the great humor. The most recent book that Margaret Verbal published is a book called Stealing and this is a little bit of a different story than the three that I've talked about. This does center around a female but it's a young girl and you realize in reading these books about these women who are sort of similar but are very different people and then reading Stealing which is about a young Cherokee girl in the Midwest how excellent Margaret Burble is at characterization through what we learn about these women but also all the other characters in the books really come to life they come off the page they're developed strongly and uniquely and they each have their own character. So Stealing is about a girl named Kit. She's nine years old in the 1950s. She lives with her father and she makes friends with a woman who has moved into the area where she lives. This woman's named Bella and Kit doesn't have a mother and she and Bella, who is old enough to be her mother, 
develop this really strong friendship and Bella sort of becomes a mom to Kit and feels like a mom to Kit. This is viewed with some suspicion by some very nosy people in the community. So something happens that results in Kit being removed from the situation that she's in and then taken to a Christian boarding school. So this book is from Kit's point of view, but it's being told to us from the pages of Kit's journal. And it is Kit who is looking back through her journal to reflect on what she's reading there. This is a journal that she kept when she was in this boarding school, but the pages sort of jump all over the place from what might be happening to her at school to what happened to her before school. And this is how we learn the whole story of what has happened to Kit. What's interesting is that Kit is giving us this story as she is reviewing the journal that she kept in secret and she hid. And so there are parts of this story that she doesn't even remember. She'd forgotten. And so she sort of uses the pieces of what she's reading in her journal to put together what actually happened to her. And it makes her realize how her life, her family, her relationships, her emotional growth, all of that was stolen from her by this experience of being placed in this boarding school. This is the only book of Margaret Verbal's that is specifically from the first person point of view. Listening to an interview with Margaret Verbal, I learned that she wrote the character of Kit because Kit's voice just came to her. She didn't think about Kit. She didn't dream up Kit. This voice just came into her head and she wanted to tell this story. And it's just such an interesting way of telling us about what happened to the Cherokee Nation through these Christian boarding schools. Children can sometimes see things in black and white and they're missing the nuances, but they also might be missing the lying and the gaslighting that is happening as well. That's the overview of Verbal's four books. Another thing that's really interesting about all these books is Margaret Verbal herself, the story of how she got these published and why she chose to tell the stories. She told the first book that she actually wrote was Cherokee America, but it, it took her 20 years to write and because she had another career and it wasn't picked up by any agents or publishers because though it was extremely well written and and people told her that, they just said, there's not a place for these stories. If you want to tell a story about Native Americans, then you need to focus on one single person. And she felt that that was an unusual request because she didn't know of any Cherokee who would tell a story about a single person. All the stories were communal. And you really see this in Cherokee America. But then she took this advice and she did write a book about a single person. She wrote Stealing about Kit. And she wrote that book in 2007. In 2007, when that book was brought to publishers, the idea of these boarding schools and these children being robbed of their lives and being taken away from their families wasn't something that people thought was real and they didn't know about it. That book didn't get published either. Then Margaret Verbal wrote Maud's Line and she was taking part of Cherokee America and she was focusing on one person. She was going forward into the future a little bit and she said in an interview that she placed it there to show what was happening to people growing up at this time in the Cherokee Nation. They really didn't see a future for themselves. This, the assimilation had been so strong and the eradication had been so strong that they were being raised to be able to survive in a white world. And if you think about that in relationship to the boarding schools, that's also something that comes up in stealing. Kit's father believes that it's important for her to go to school because she's gonna learn how to read and write and she'll be speaking English. That's what was presented to parents because there wasn't another choice. I learned more when I was reading more about Margaret Verbal about how roles for enrolled Indians were closed in 1907 and they didn't open up again until the 1970s. So someone like Maud wouldn't have seen her future as an enrolled Cherokee. So this gives her this drive to find a way out of that world. When you go back to Cherokee America, you're seeing a little bit of a different story because it's before that time. And there is this strong sense of this Cherokee nation. When Two Feathers Fell From the Sky is really the latest book in her life that you wrote even though it was not the most recent book that she published. So her, her journey to getting her books published is very interesting and all the books sort of are important and inform one another. Each one of these books is really great. Her writing is so strong and meticulous and 
funny. And as I said earlier, the characters are just so real, despite sometimes there being so many of them. I really, really can't wait to see what Margaret Verbal writes next because I so enjoyed each one of these. And I would recommend that you try any one of these, if not all of them. If you're not familiar with Margaret Verbal, maybe now is the time to change that. Thank you for joining me.